Welcome to the session titled Strategy, the Ones Who Manage the Marketplace. This is the E.W. Scripps School of Journalism, Journalism Centennial Symposium celebrating 100 years of journalism education at Ohio University's campus. My name is Craig Davis and I'm starting this session and I'm also the moderator. So you will see amazing multitasking skills in this session. Um, and I have the honor of moderating this session with three recent alums with high experience, with highly relevant experience. Our first panelist is on the far right. Our first panelist is Stephanie Caesar on the far right. She's a group director for media strategy and planning at PhD Media. Her experience at Ohio University and Scripps in strategic communications and marketing were crucial to her interviewing process and landing her first job in advertising at Visium in New York City. Since then, Stephanie has worked in the advertising industry for nearly a decade, garnering experience across various brands, Procter & Gamble, Diageo, AMC Networks, Discover Card, and Sonos, and media agencies, PhD, Cara, and Media Assembly. This background has allowed her to refine her expertise in the media landscape, specifically digital and social media, and build a strong network of connections in the industry. What Stephanie loves most about her job is the people and the collaborative environment, as well as the challenges of creative problem solving and innovation. So welcome, Stephanie. Our third panelist is Ashley Osborne. Ashley leads marketing and brand partnerships for Hype Space, a destination for video challenges where people can have fun and celebrate the spirit of competition in digital in a digital community that is positive and upbeat. Yeah. She is a two-time graduate of Ohio University with a bachelor's in journalism and a master's in community dance. While still at OU, Ashley founded Amplified Communication, a creative and branding firm. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you. <laughs> nice to have you. Our next panelist to my right is Zainab Kande. Zainab Kande. Uh, Zainab is a people and diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging leader who finds purpose in guiding people and companies to use tools and resources to maximize their potential and value. With experience at two Fortune 10 companies, she has leveraged her expertise to create business value, drive efficiency, and collaborate effectively, all while remaining a strategic business partner and employee advocate. Through previous roles as a human resource manager, talent strategist, communications advisor, and now as a senior program manager at Amazon, Zainab seeks to always foster inclusive spaces and experiences to best develop high performing team leaders. She holds a master's of human resource management from the Fisher College of Business at Ohio State University and is a proud Scripps kid and Bobcat. Welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. All right. So we'll start off with the first question uh, and then we'll start with with you and then we'll just go around. How's that? Um, so the first question is what media and or professional organizations were you involved in during your time in the journalism school and how did they help your career? Yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, while I was here at Ohio University as a Scripps kid, I was an active participant at WOUB. Um, I worked in radio news as well as broadcast um, during my time and what a lot of the skills that I gained that I still use today um, was very much understanding who my audience is um, and where my message is going, ensuring that it's clear, 
um, listening to feedback from folks um, on what they've heard and how to always improve and get better, uh, even in presentation skills. It, it's something that's come out of my, come out of my work, and um, oftentimes things will people will pick up on uh, for the creativity that I still have. Of I really liked how you almost focused on every detail um, that's in this presentation, or um, the compliments of you thought of everything. But I think that comes back to the training of it's content I want people to engage with. It's content I want folks to learn from. And to do that, you have to work backwards, which I learned in the journalism program to ensure that it's content that's accessible for them to um, work with. Awesome. So did you start at WOUB when you were a freshman? I did. Yeah, okay, did. so you worked for four years. This is an ad for Mark Brewer and WOUB. Yeah, it, it, it was an yeah. incredible opportunity. Even today, when people ask me about my career um, history and where I started, I always say I had a great opportunity to start out yeah. working at WOUB as a freshman. Right, okay, very good. Ashley, what media or professional organizations were you involved in during your time here at OU? Many. <laughs> no, I, I definitely was involved. I, especially freshman year, I was really um, exploring a lot. I, want, I was like the student that wanted to check out every club and put my email on every single list at the resource fair and all that kind of stuff. But as I started to get more experience, learn more about myself, explore my own interests, I saw an opportunity to, um, I'm just gonna, you know, plug the organization that my friend Melindy and I um, started while we were on campus, um, Amplified Communication, because honestly, it was, it was, it was a, it was a great time. <laughs> it was an opportunity for me. I've, I've always been interested in entrepreneurship and really just like the idea of turning something, your, your idea, ideas are just energy, turning that into something tangible. Um, and that's really where I was like, okay, I saw an opportunity to use the things that I was learning in class and um, apply them to different student entrepreneurs and you know, looking at around on campus seeing who are the students that are trying to like start their own business or who are the artists on campus that would, could really utilize strategic communications. I'm a big like, artist, creative person, I'm a dancer, photographer, um, and I wanted to find some way to start taking my passions that I have for the arts and also apply them to strategic communication and journalism and storytelling. So, you know, I always say like, if something doesn't, if a platform doesn't exist or it's not like how you want it to be, this is a beautiful place to start your own program your own organizations there's like the resources that means i had to stretch myself a lot finding an advisor figuring out you know getting in student senate to advocate for our organ our brand new organization that had maybe like a few people in it finding people to get in the organization because you have to fill out you know have an e-board and everything like it was a big it was a learning curve i honestly didn't know what i was getting myself into but it put a Fire. It put a lot of confidence in me by the time I graduated, which I would say like was really awesome. And I got to make really cool connections. I got to, you know, pop start making partnerships with the Center for Entrepreneurship and different aspects of the campus and different schools on campus that I probably wouldn't have explored or talked to had I just stayed in what was already there or what was already existing. And we got to, you know, do different i mean we we put on um ohio connect which which is a networking mixer that we, we we did a lot of events and did a lot of workshops to teach you know social media was starting this not to i mean you not to date me but you can see when we graduated and if you put that on the timeline of like when social media was starting to really become a big part of of marketing and communications out and media out in the world we kind of were like trying to figure all that out so we would come together and do like workshops and you know just really figuring out taking the things that we were learning in class and applying them to the people, our peers, our, our colleagues, you know, it was a really, really great experience and I'm glad that we did it. Um, we put on a concert and that was 
oh my gosh, <laughs> that was, it was very stressful. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I just, you know, we had ideas and we just wanted to figure out how to make things happen. And that was like the spirit of it all. So I would definitely shout out, you know, everybody who was a part of Amplified because that was, that was like, I couldn't have, yeah, I, we created that experience and opportunity. So it was great. Shout out to the school for supporting it also, because like I said, if you have an idea here, like you can make it happen. You can do it. Um, just find people who are, you know, on the same page, on the same wave as you. And cause there, there are, there are people out there. Um, but yeah, and I'll stop there, but amplify lots of hands-on experience, lots of opportunity to like grassroots something. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So when did you start this? Was it your freshman year, sophomore year, junior year? It was my junior year. Okay. So it was actually, um, I, it was after I, <laughs> yeah, it was coming into my junior year. I had just done okay. um, a summer internship. That's what, I think that's what it was. I had just done a summer internship in New York. I was always like, I wanted to, I was ready to work, y'all. Like, I went, ever since I came here, I was like, I'm getting an internship. Like, I applied for Miss Universe so many times, I never got it. But, <laughs> but it was just like, I was, I wanted, I was just like thirsty for, I was hungry to get experience and apply the things that I was learning in class because that's one thing, like, I feel like Scripps is really good about making sure we understand the importance of getting those outside those like extra opportunities or those like extra things that it's not just the classroom but really having chances to apply what you're learning in the class so it was my junior year that we um started it i had just intern finished a summer internship for the brooklyn hip-hop festival and i was like you know what i'm doing this like we're gonna do this we're gonna figure it out and make it happen and we did. It was a very stressful though, I'm not gonna lie, but it was a good time, learned a lot. <laughs> That's awesome, thank you. So Stephanie, what media and professional organizations were you involved in during your time? Well, we worked very closely together um, in an ad club. So my, and this is back when we were on quarters, um, dating myself, um, <laughs> first quarter, fall quarter is where you got to explore all the different journalism student organizations. I wanted to try out a different, a, a few different ones. I thought I would be in broadcast journalism and I found ad club and I found my people, as I say, it just was instant connection with the people in that group. I saw that they had this amazing motivation and, and excitement for the work that they were doing. And they were all participating in the American Ad Federation's National Student Advertising Competition, which is a very large scale, real life advertising situation um, where you get a client brief and you get about six months to actually put together a full marketing plan. And I saw that they were part of this real world um exercise and they it was long term and they were so hard working i really admire that it's something i admire about all the script students um and they were very friendly and again they were just my people so i think i just really connected with those folks and so that's how i got involved in ad club and nicac it is exactly what got me my first job in new york city actually because the person i was interviewing with at my first um, advertising job who was the president of visium knew about this competition so she knew about nsac and so she asked me really um, intriguing questions about my work that i had done on this um, on that over the course of all four years and i could speak to it no problem and it really was that real world experience that she was looking for and somebody that she was looking to employ. Mm. Um, so it is exactly 100% what got me my first job. Mm. So can you think of some of those questions that they ask you? I know I'm putting you on the spot with this one, but yeah, like, I'll, I'll, that would help students here think about because this, this is important because you learn stuff in the classroom and you learn how to define something, how to apply something, but those are not the questions that interviewers ask. They want to know how you do certain things. So if any of them yeah. come to mind, just share those. Yeah, I can think of one specifically. So um, every year we got a different client brief. I worked on State Farm, JCPenney, Nissan, and Glidden Paint. 
and I very specifically remember her asking, what was your strategic insight yeah. Yeah. that b led you to build this campaign? Because I had our proof of work um, in my portfolio that I brought to the interview. And she yeah. said, what was the strategic insight? And that's what I spoke to saying when we were doing research for JCPenney, we saw that um, women are not just shopping on their own. They bring their their daughters, their children, their relatives, their friends, and they go shopping together. And that's kind of what that's helped true. us come up with our tagline, which was get ready together with JCPenney. And I could just talk through everything from how we did the market research and how the strategic insight applied to and inform the rest of our marketing campaign. And I, I really think that that's what it was right. that helped me um, really connect with her and the work that I would end up doing later in media. Right, you demonstrated you knew what you were talking about. Right. And there was a great strategy with Glidden Paint too. Oh yeah. I forget what that was now. It had to do with the colors, uh, These that paint is only for small projects that are artist based something along those lines I yeah it was about accenting time. your life yes yes yeah. really good so great okay question two we'll just uh continue in a circle here um which classes were especially helpful in preparing you for your career yeah i'd say for me it was radio and television writing that i took with allison hunter and oh, yes. um why that was such a wonderful class for me was you know as a student you're very excited about writing finally getting a chance to jump in and put your spin on the story and explain it and i remember having this interaction with her i was so excited i <laughs> gave her my work she was like this is great but it needs to be simple and mm. i was looking at her like like this is my my best work um and she was like no i agree with you it is she was like but who was this for and do they have enough time to read all of this and if they're gonna get a, a quick snippet of the news or maybe they're uh listening to it over coffee or on their way to work you, you want to make sure they're grasping the information that they need and um it was a really great moment for me that i use every day um whether it's a senior level executive to um, an employee that I want to just understand a message that's coming out about a program that we're creating of really pulling what's going to be most important to that person or why are they mm -hmm. going to care about this product um, that has stuck with me. I'll say also um, communication laws as well as media ethics and law was instrumental um, in terms of understanding risk in any type of project that you're working on, um, often looking for precedent to see if things have been done first and how it was handled and um, any laws that have been created or any fallout or even benefits uh, from a research standpoint always benefits me when I'm going into work. And I'll say last, uh, that was part of the philosophy credit or the philosophy um, requirement um, through being in the program, there was a, uh, race, gender, and sexuality, or it was religion, gender, and sexuality class that we had to take. And I think that was a wonderful class in being challenged to think critically um, about many sources that come up or things that seem commonplace, whether that's books or media that you're consuming or even feedback you're getting from someone that, that you trust, um, but always looking at information in a way to consider who the source is, um, consider the background, who gathered it, um, is very important to be able to form your own thoughts and fact and truth um, and your own opinion. And so I think those classes stood out most to me and is what I tend to use every day. So you mentioned Allison Hunter, yeah. and she looked at the first story that you wrote and provided feedback, yeah. but she was involved in this over the long term, right? Yeah. Were, so, um, over time you get to learn and learn more and learn more and you get feedback on your work and that's actually how the industry works the industry doesn't run on multiple choice tests no it's it's sitting down with your boss and saying here's what i've done what do you think mm -hmm. and and reacting to that so that experience is is a great one i think that's the best way to learn actually it certainly, so, was. It certainly yeah. was allison would be great she is. She's yeah. still a mentor, I'd say, to yes, this day. Yeah, yeah. Ashley, which classes were especially helpful in preparing you for your career? Oh, wow. Um, all of them, but I would say, 
Oh, if I had to pick one, I think I'm, they're all helpful. So I'm going to go with the one that I feel like um, kind of added fuel to the passion, I would say, mm-hmm. is um, Dr. D's race. race gender media something i don't i forget the name of it but i got to write i got to do a research project on stereotypes of african-american women in mainstream media and i was like the it just fire it just fueled my passion for like representation in the media um and really i knew there was there's always been issues but that class really created the space in my life and the time to dive deep on that and do some actual research. And um, it, it kind of, it came at a good time, like towards the end of my time, my program. Um, and it, it just kind of like, I don't know, like it was nice to be able to start the process like pick, doing an actual research project where I no one was telling me what to do. I got to take a look at, you know, the take a look at the entire media landscape and look think about something that I wanted to dive into. And it just, I don't know, it, just something about it and her process, like you said, of sharing the feedback and, and t- pointing me in the right direction. And there was, you know, multiple drafts to the process and not getting too attached. Like, okay, I wrote my first draft and I thought it was all great. And then you get it, you know, torn apart a little bit and to make it better though. And I think that's like something as, as like a creative, you kind of, when you're first starting out, you're real precious about your first draft. You're real precious about the beginning. Like, and I had always been like, I've always had like a little aversion to feedback because I take it personally and not, you know, not learning, not knowing how to like separate myself from my work, but being open to that process definitely helped um, me like develop, I guess, a little callous for that and being like, no, like this is this is a part of the process and your passion that you have for the project is going to carry you all the way through the end. And I think that was like a a space where I could really put passion for like my own personal interests or like representation and seeing myself in the media and kind of the reason why I wanted to get into this whole field in the first place. Um, And then going on to work in the entertainment industry, it just kind of like set me up to go on that process. So I would say that was one of my favorite classes and one that, you know, I think it helped me when I got to like the Oprah Winfrey Network to be able to look at all of our programming from a more like strategic or a more um, analytical perspective versus looking at things as just purely entertainment. So that was, that was, that's one of my favorite. That was one that I enjoyed. What was the question? <laughs> that was it. That was it. What classes were especially helpful? Especially for- helpful. Yeah. It was definitely helpful. So, Stephanie, which classes were helpful in preparing you for your career? That's a great question. I think definitely the advertising specific uh, classes were like home to me. That's where I felt the most confident. The journalism, the broader journalism classes like com law and ethics um, were um, really exciting to me. But I think what made me stretch the most were the classes outside of journalism school. So if you think about some of the fun classes I took that still have left an imprint on me are things like women in rock and roll. Yeah. Um, which was, um, I grabbed the last seat um, as if, like I tried really hard to get that and a spot opened up, so I grabbed it. I took a political terrorism class. I took scuba diving, actually, a senior year class, obviously, which is a hobby I still do to this day, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, a lot of science in scuba diving. It's, it's, it's really interesting, yeah. so it's good that I had a whole... You can't make mistakes in scuba diving. You cannot. <laughs> um, some other classes, I minored in Spanish, so I took a Spanish poetry class. Um, and it's all these other classes outside of that, again, where I was comfortable and excited that really pushed me to be a well-rounded um, professional when I got to the workplace. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great. 
Okay, next question. Here we go. Share a favorite memory from your time in the journalism school and why it means so much to you. Do you want to go first, or are we putting too much pressure? Or? No, we're fine. Okay, yeah. all right. Go, go ahead. Um, the one with Allison is my absolute favorite. Okay. Um, I've told that one already. So I'd say my next favorite um, story that happened, it's funny now, it wasn't that day, um, <laughs> but uh, we were doing different coverage shifts um, for the newsroom and I had a weekend shift. So um, I believe it was a Sunday morning. It was very light, airy, mm -hmm. seven to 11 um, a.m. My goal was to get to Jeff Brunch right after I was mm -hmm. done. Um, I understand that does not happen anymore, wow. so I've just dated myself, right. but um, everything was fine. As you know, mm -hmm. I realized later this happened. Everything was fine until like 1045, and all of a sudden um, information came in on the news why there was a fire that was, that was happening locally. And so I was by myself on this shift, and... Um, dug deep, tried to find out all of the information. I was like, I was only supposed to be here for 15 more minutes. Why did this fire happen at 1045? Mm -hmm. um, and it was in that moment recognizing I'm by myself. So there, there isn't anybody else to um, share work and content with. But when I look back on it in hindsight, um, it was moments like in class that had prepared me right. to know exactly what type of details need to be pulled or what questions I may need to ask if I need to reach out to someone for the person who was going to be filling in after me that may have needed to give the noon update um, what I was going to need to leave in place for them and um, what additional content and resources that they may need. And so I don't think I ended up leaving until about noon, 1230, and I think had reached out to um, the supervisor for that weekend of, I want you to know I've left everything in its place. This did happen and more information is pending, but we have what we need. Um, and so I'd look back on that and laugh now uh, because I think it was just a start of many moments that have happened career-wise and even after I've left OU of you're not expecting it, um, but once you can take the confidence in yourself from what you've learned and you, you take that pause from like, oh shoot, it's just me. I have yeah. to figure this out, that you really can do it. Um, and I think that's a testament to the type of program we have here at Scripps. Oh, that's great, awesome. Ashley. A favorite memory. Well, honestly, I'm just gonna say the one that comes to the top of my head because it made me feel good and affirmed was it was um my the end of my junior year i'm pretty sure yeah the end of my junior year we had the journalism banquet and i won a scholarship and i was like me <laughs> that's really how i felt i won a scholarship and i won um, I was awarded an internship with Dream Adventures in New York City, and that's like really where I wanted to go. And Dream Adventures, if you haven't heard of it, is a um, incubator for startup companies. And there, it was just something about that moment. Like I felt like you know I was in the middle of like starting this organization, Amplified, and it just felt like oh wow, like they see me and they see what I'm trying to do and they see like that I'm really like ambitious and they're helping me out and Bob Stewart shout out um <laughs> is he still here where is he at he's retired, he retired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's living life as he yeah. should <laughs> But yeah, um, and, and receiving that at the, the banquet that night, I mean, I've had a lot of memories here, but I would say like getting, getting that award still has an impact on my heart and I will never forget it. So not to like, sorry, I don't have a very elaborate story for that question, sure. but that was, that was definitely a favorite memory. So thank you. Personal achievement. Personal yeah, achievement, yeah. yes, because right. I, 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 it was a, yeah, it was a journey. I've had, I had a really great journey, <laughs> but it was, it was nice to just be like recognized and to do something, you know, have an opportunity to go do what I really wanted to do. And I, like, I really was, I wanted to go to New York and all the things, and I feel like, the school just like helped me achieve that dream and I will never 
take that for granted. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, favorite memories? Um, you know, I was actually also very inspired by some of the alumni who were speaking earlier about all the hours we put into our <laughs> extracurriculars and all the hard work and how much we actually enjoyed it because of the people and the work that we were doing was really good work. And so a lot of my favorite journalism school memories are those extra hours put in after class and late at night working in um, the computer labs on our extracurricular assignments. Um, but a very specific memory for me would be, I, I think every year that I was working on the NSAC program in the spring, we would have to prepare a 20 minute, a 20 minute memorized presentation to be basically pitching our plan to these senior executives of these companies. And we would spend hours and sometimes we just had to get out of the computer lab and out of the classroom. So we would go to the Scripps Amphitheater on the perfect spring afternoon and we would practice there out loud and it was just really fun making memories with those people and again the beautiful campus of Athens and all for like all this hard work that we had been putting together um, was was really nice. That's great. So like as a professor you always have you know favorite well not favorite students but you have students that you see do something really cool mm. and um i have three favorite memories of stephanie that Aww, i'm going to share three. because we worked together for three for four years yeah. so the first one was ad club i was presenting and you were it was your freshman year and i asked you know does anyone want to do such and such and immediately in the back stephanie's hand went up <laughs> and i said okay fine and <laughs> Then she asked me all these questions that I wasn't prepared for. And I thought, wow, this student is really on top of it. Um, and she ended up doing great work. Um, I also remember when we were practicing for the NSAC campaign, we were in a hotel, I forget where it was for Glidden. And, you know, it was all, everyone was all over the place. And, and she just had to lay down the law and said, okay, we got to get it together here, folks. I run a tight ship. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> And I just remember her doing that, and I thought to myself, ooh, that's, that's why she's going to be successful. Okay. And then another one, this is a third one, I like threes. We were sitting in my office, it was in the old office, Scripps Hall, mm -hmm. and a parent and a daughter came in the office. And, um, you know, everyone knows this is journalism. Most of the students come in here looking for news and information as their, as their major. And this particular student and her mom wanted advertising and PR and they had just had a session with Bob Stewart and they came into my office and they said, I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. They yeah. said, you know, I don't think this place is right. I mean, this is more about journalism and there's not a lot of advertising and PR for my daughter to be involved in. And the daughter was there too. And I started to answer that because I don't like hearing that kind of question. And then Stephanie took over and she's like, well, here's how it really is. <laughs> and she told the story. The student actually came here and did really well. And I'm so, still in touch yeah. with that student on yes. social media. And ah. <laughs> she's very successful now. Yeah, yes, and she's yes. graduated. So yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah, so that's great. OK, um, round four. What internships did you have? Um, well, prior to coming to school, I had interned at the local ABC news station where I lived. Okay. Um, after my first year, I was supposed to return back, but um, some communication had broken down and I wasn't able to get it. And so with a hustling spirit, I quickly found another one with the local paper um, that was in my town that summer and got a lot of um, clips from my portfolio. Um, and then my junior year, I interned at the Chautauquan Daily in upstate New York. Um, I believe they still come back to camp, but they had a really great relationship with Scripps, and so that's where I did my final internship. Awesome. Good. Ashley, how about you? Um, okay. I think I had an internship like every summer after my sophomore year. So the first one I did, and oh, I got one through the school, which was Dream Adventures, and then the other ones I kind of like, you know, we 
we figure it out. Like we're resourceful students because <laughs> you got to have that internship to graduate. <laughs> right, right. So um, I actually I did a lot. I my first internship was doing social media for an entrepreneur. She had her own PR agency and I did. I helped her with the branding for her PR firm. So it was like a a win-win situation. I got to learn about PR and also get the hands-on experience from, you know, having the internship, working with her very closely. I was like, it was just me and her, honestly. Like it was her handling the actual PR thing. So I got to um, see in real time, like her drafting up um, press releases and putting together media kits and doing interviews and you know hand doing the things for her clients but then i would also have to take that information and turn that into you know her put that out there for her brand and communicate that this is what her company is doing and is capable of doing this is who she's working with and that was my first internship and it was virtual and remote which back then was yeah. like yeah that was in like wow. 2000 13 and I did that while I was studying abroad. I'm wild. I know. I, I look back like, girl, what were you doing? <laughs> everything, everything. Everything. Like just so ambitious and energetic. Anyway, so that was my first internship. And then I did um I interned at the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival, which was like I did like marketing and publicity, lots of grassroots marketing and promoting and um, press releases, working with their media team as well. Um, what else did I do? I interned Dream Adventures, which was amazing. Yeah. I got to work with like five different startup companies. I would go work on, go to the office on Wall Street every day with my little button up and my blazer. And I was like, I am out here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was amazing. And just being around, you know, that creative, like entrepreneurial spirit, I, that was definitely a favorite internship. And then right after I graduated, so that was between my junior and senior year. And then after I graduated, um, I did the Marcus Graham Project, which is an amazing organization. Y'all should definitely check them out. Um, I was a copywriter. And honestly, when I did that, I, I applied to be, um, do like, so the way, let me back up. The way that it works is they bring people to, they bring like a bunch of people together to create a pop-up advertising agency. And mind you, I was strategic communication, but I was very focused on PR. But somehow they saw like, I guess it was honestly, I applied to, to be like the PR person on the team and they selected me to be a copywriter. And I was like, what is a copywriter? <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, I have no idea, but I want to do this internship. So I'll just go. So the whole summer before we started, I'm like researching, like, what is a copywriter? And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is dope. How come I never heard about this? Like, it's writing, but like really creative. And so I did that. And yeah, that was that was a good time. That was in Dallas, Texas. And we got to work on different clients. Our clients were PepsiCo, Usher. Usher has a um, nonprofit foundation called Usher's New Look. And um, what was the last one? Beats by Dre. Oh my gosh, how could mm -hmm. I forget that? So that was like really, really great experience. We like, uh, like Stephanie said, you know, presenting and doing pitches to the executives at this company, which by that time, I had a good, you know, I got a lot of experience doing presentations just from all the presentations that we had to do in school. Um, so yeah, those are my interns. I did a lot of unpaid work, but, <laughs> but it was all worth it. Um, it definitely paid off in the long term, especially when it was time for me to start making money, um, for real. And yeah, a lot of internships. Yeah. So as a copywriter, did you mm. save all that stuff, put it in your portfolio? Did I you... did. I did. But the funny thing is, I did not really get into a real like copywriting role after that. Copywriting is like now to me, it's like a skill, but I never worked mm. as a as a copywriter <laughs> at an advertising agency, honestly, because that internship was the only experience that I had doing copywriting. And I was like, oh, I, this is a whole different world. Like it really is, you know, it's different from 
PR, obviously. Right, right. Yeah, it's Absolutely. very different. Um, and I just, I kind of just took the skill and the experience and I utilize it now. I mean, we're writing copy all the time, every day. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, it was all, everything that I, all the internships that I have done, I definitely still utilize. I learned skills that I still use to this day, uh, especially at a startup tech company where you're wearing I leads marketing and brand partnerships and that means a lot <laughs> it definitely means a lot wearing a lot of hats all the time yeah great thank you mm -hmm. Stephanie internships that you had yes I had two made internships obviously part of a lot of different extracurriculars um very very busy with school so um I believe it was one of the years where we were on quarters and we had that really long winter break about six weeks oh, yeah. perfect opportunity for a quick internship if if um if it was available so I did I interned at an ad agency um, in Cleveland over the winter break. It was great. It was really helpful. Made some local connections in downtown Cleveland. Um, got to help out on a few projects that they had been working on. Um, didn't really get too in the weeds, if I'm perfectly honest, but I was in uh, client meetings and they had the clients come in. They were pitching something to these clients and the clients turned to me and asked me what my opinion was. <laughs> and I was like very taken aback, but it was nice to be at a smaller agency where these clients were actually caring what even the intern had to say and making me feel included. Um, and so that was really, really great experience. I also interned at our own athletic department over at the Convo one summer. Um, so highly recommend a summer in Athens. It was a great, great experience. So I did marketing for the athletic department that summer, um, planning what we would do during halftime of the different basketball games or football games. And then I continued that internship throughout the year and I did more um, media work with the athletic department. So I'd go to all the football games, all the basketball games senior year, help with their marketing and media team. You are busy. Yeah. You're all busy. <laughs> okay, so we've touched on this, but this is the question. Tell us about your journey to the job you have now and which stops along the way helped you get there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, I, can, I can start. It, okay. it actually started here at um, OU, of course. So I, I was a journalism student. Um, during my time in the program, though, I, I found myself being very interested in the leadership and management of journalism um, and had the chance to talk to some mentors, one of which at the time um, was Dr. McDavis, the former president of Ohio University, um, which based on the student organizations that I was in, as well as what I was doing at WOUB, and I was in a lot of student organizations um, and often very busy, but I, I was liking kind of the program management, project management that I was doing. Um, I was in the SAC group, which is an offshoot of Student Senate. Um, we're helping student organizations get funding and money to do their programs and was enjoying a lot of that. Um, and so Dr. McDavis at the time had said, well, have you ever considered like a business career or an MBA? And I was just kind of like, no. And he was like, well, what's what you're doing or what you're interested in and still working with people and leaders? human resources could be something. And at the time, I think it was like 19, all I knew that human resources did was cut my checks uh, <laughs> from when I was, when I was working. Um, and so I also, similar to what Stephanie said, spent a summer in Athens. I took that, my, the summer between my sophomore and junior year off from interning to really research and understand what I wanted to do while working um, at the university in residential housing and also having opportunities um, to work in management roles there with, with my peers, um, which taught lessons at the time of influencing without authority because it's like we're all 19, 20, 21 years old. How much right. power do I truly have over, over you or how do I influence you to help us get this work done um, in a way that's efficient and satisfactory? Um, which I always had a great team and we were able to do that. And something I often recommend to students and, and people in general, but especially being at a university, is if you're just interested in something, take the chance to get to know it. You can audit a class. If you don't want it showing up on your transcript or necessarily getting the grade or you're just interested, do that. And so I was able to take a business course my junior year and truly enjoyed it. 
um, still very much loved what I was doing in the journalism school, but by the time it, I got to my senior year and was looking to graduate, um, knew that I was interested in, in human resources. Um, and so from there, I matriculated to graduate school at Ohio State, which was interesting. Many people um, with an HR background will also often come from a psychology or um, statistics background. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of questions I used to get was well, journalism, um, which I think having the confidence to understand that uh, there are many transferable skills that you come out with from a journalism program, especially in the realm of communicating effectively and planning and organization and being uh, very adherent to deadlines um, came up with many strengths uh, that I already had. And it was just learning the, the, other, the other pieces that fit in from business, but because of the jobs I had had at Ohio University and the student organizations that I was a part of, I already had things on my resume to say, which it took a while in my professional career to get to, but in Student Senate, you manage near, at the time, manage nearly half a million dollars of general fee money mm -hmm. that you're dispersing. And so having had those experiences to talk through, um, especially once I started interviewing and, and looking for my first uh, first time roles, um, was already very instrumental to show the way that I planned and organized and um, strategized how to get work done and effective work done that was going to have results. Um, and so really where I am today, I, I'm still within the HR realm, but do um, program management. A lot of those, I think, have um, origins from the work that I got to do here at Ohio University. Very good, thank you. Ashley. Wow. Okay. So Your let's journey. start here. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's start here. So um, yeah, I graduated. I did that summer internship in Dallas where I was the copywriter for our pop-up advertising agency. And then right after I finished that, I moved to New York with about two thousand dollars in my bank account that was it and i slept on my best friend's couch i was i was one of those people <laughs> and i just i was i took a bus i literally there's a bus that goes from um dayton ohio i'm from middletown ohio and it goes from dayton to like chinatown new york and it's like i think it's like 60 dollars or something like back then it was like under under a hundred dollars and I got there, I went, I moved to New York, I did not have a job. I had some intern, I mean, I had some interviews and I told, cause I told the people, they were like, so can you come in for an interview next Tuesday? I was like, I sure can. And I got on that bus on Friday and I got to my best friend's house and slept on her couch for about a few months. I did not get that job, but I did end up getting a job um, as a paid media, like a paid media, associate at Conan Wolf, which the, the name of the agency is different now. I don't, I don't know what it's called off the top of my head, but it was um, myself and my boss. We were the only two people in that department. Like I said, not to, you y'all see the dates, but like social, like this was when advertising, like real advertising on social media was just starting to pick up and take off when paid media on social media started to like become a thing. Um, when it, it was Facebook and not Meta and all that kind of stuff. So is this on? Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like I can't hear, but I know I'm loud. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was, yeah, I was making like $600 a week. And then this was in like October of 2015. And I was like, okay, this was cute, uh, but it's really cold. By February, I was over it. I was over living in New York. I was like, the subway, the snow, the wind, the negative wind chill, like I gotta, this ain't it. Like this is not what I, I always experience New York in the summertime, never in the winter time. It, there is night and day y'all. So I was like, okay, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get out of here networking i joined this organization called minorities in media connect and through that organization is how i got another a new position working at a media agency called resolution media and they made me they said i could 
they hired me, but they said I had to relocate to Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, bet. Like, perfect. Sunny weather all the time. Get me out of here. And I'll have a job. Perfect. Let's go. So I moved to, oh, gosh. I moved to L.A. Um, and I was like, I had nothing. I literally took a plane and some suitcases, hated my job, got fired. Like, I've been, y'all, I've been fired, laid off. <laughs> that, I, when I tell you I've been on a journey, like, I have been on a journey. I've quit a job. Okay, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, this I, is getting good. It, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, the job, I didn't really love paid media. I liked, I wanted to do, I wanted to do more like strategy and they had me doing like a lot of spreadsheets and I was like, these numbers, I'm doing the budgets wrong. Like it's all like, get me out of here. Like I'm not, this is not the right fit for me. So I ended up getting fired from that job and I was like crushed, but also like relieved at the same time. Cause I came in, I had like, Prince had just passed away. So I put these like purple braids in my hair and they were looking at me like, what are you doing like you what no girl you got to go like <laughs> you got to get out of here so that's another story from another time but <laughs> right i was like okay i'm not fitting in here it's fine so i get a i get um a new job working for a woman who started her own company her own marketing consulting company called talk to jess and she had she was working with clients dove mattel all these people like on her own doing she her what she specializes in is like inclusivity diversity lots of like feminism and helping you know when barbie came out with all the new barbies she was like a part of that strategy team so i was like oh this is more my speed like this is my lane so i did a lot of um social media i did social media i wrote her. she had a podcast i did a lot of content creation for her company so i was like doing photography y'all i was doing copywriting i was doing social media i was doing um her podcast scripts like writing a whole lot all from her kitchen table in los angeles in studio city and then she rearranged some things in her company and let me it was like myself and a graphic designer who's an illustrator her name is sarah epperson she's amazing y'all should check her out too um but she let us go so that was my first time getting like laid off so i'm like okay but around then because this job um for she like it was so entrepreneurial she let us do a lot of different things i got to create a lot i started picking up photography and i was like i'm really good at this photography thing and okay let's see where this goes now i'm laid off so okay i unemployment let's ride this out <laughs> So I start. I like started doing a freelance photography career, and in that time, I shot a campaign for. I was just posting my photos on Instagram, um, just to share. And a an, uh, creative agency found me to shoot a campaign for Reebok that summer. And I was doing a lot of networking. I was shooting like I was doing a lot of portraits, but that led to some other things. I shot a campaign for um, the city of LA. Was doing. Um, a new like entrepreneurship endeavor like where they're really like supporting la made in la like products that are made in la um and i got to shoot a lot of product shots and lifestyle shots for that and then i got the call to come work at um the oprah winfrey network and i was like oh <laughs> oprah like what like my mom is gonna be so proud <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I got hired. Um, I started working at the Oprah Winfrey Network where I was doing social media, um, lots of, yeah, lots of social media. Still got to utilize like photography in that position as well because we had a lot of events and all that kind of stuff. And um, I was there for like a year until I was like, okay, like, I need some more money, y'all. Like, I know Oprah is a millionaire, but I need, like, what's what's the forward movement, right? Like, where are we going? So they weren't really, like, in the position. They, it was during the time they were merging with Discovery Network, so they weren't in, they were in, like, a hiring freeze or whatever, and promotions weren't really happening, and I was like, well, inflation is, so I... <laughs> 
got to figure something out because I was like, it's time to go. But it was a great time. I got to travel in that job, work on like uh, Queen Sugar and Green Leaf. And if you if you watch OWN, then you would know some of these shows. But if you don't, then it's okay. They're great shows, though. You should check them out. Um, yeah, and that was really, really fun. And then after that, I got a position at IMAX, um, IMAX Corporation, and that was my, that was the funnest. That was like, that job, that was the most fun because I got to like interview the celebrity, like all the movie producers and stars and Brad Pitt, I will never forget it, on the red carpet. And I got to use like skills over, like I'm telling y'all, like the skills that we learn in this program are so like, they can be applied to so many different things and so many different opportunities. So I was doing social media, but at the time we always, you know, we got a spot on the red carpet. So I got to interview people, come up with my own fun interview questions, asking them, you know, all the things. And we would just broadcast it on our social media. Um, I came up with this idea to like, I always used to have my nails done. And <laughs> I always used to have my nails done and, and I would hold this microphone when I was interviewing like the people and I was like, y'all, we should, we should get my nail, we should do nail art according to the movie that we're going to, in, that we're going to do these interviews, the red carpet about. And they were like, okay, let's try it. And it was, I was like, this is so fun. Like, can every, my boss, my boss was amazing. Also, who you work under and who you work for, don't underestimate that too. Really make sure that you have a good, um, that you mesh well with your, with your supervisor, or with your boss, because that can really make or break your experience. As you probably could have assumed, I did not get along with the first boss that <laughs> I got fired from at my first job, but my boss at IMAX was just like really amazing and really like believed in me once again, because that's really what it's about. Like somebody who wants to see you win or somebody who wants to like see you succeed. So that was IMAX and everything was great. And then 2020 came along and all of that, all the fun, it was like shut down. There were no events in LA. There were no, there, I was just sitting behind the computer like all day, every day. I was like, this isn't it. But this is kind of where my dance aspect, dance background kind of ties into that, which is like kind of separate. But in that time, um, when I was working at OWN, I was, I liked my job, but the way that I was living was very, um, I would go to work, come home, sit on the couch all day, drink wine, fall asleep, get up and do it again the next day. And I was just living a very like, kind of like inactive lifestyle. I would try to go to the gym or like eat healthy, but it was just not really a priority until I started experiencing a lot of like stress and burnout. I think a lot from working in entertainment is just very like, it's fast paced and there's a lot going on and everything is urgent, but not really. And everything is changing every single, literally down to the last second. And it was just a lot. And so I started going to therapy through that job. I didn't even have like, um, like good insurance. I was paying out of pocket. I really couldn't afford it. And that's what really made me realize like, I need more money. Like I need some more resources so that I can take, start taking care of myself. And I started, um, once I, so I got out of own and I started working at IMAX. I got a promotion, pay increase, all that kind of stuff. And I started taking dance classes just to exercise, just to like go get off work and like take care of myself and like, you know, have an outlet to release some of the stress that I was experiencing from working in entertainment. And I went into this woman's class and this is like kind of off topic, but it's all relevant to how I got here today. So I'm just going to talk about it. But I went to this woman's class and she was like, she told me that I danced with so much passion. And since I was living in LA, she was like, you can really do something with this. Like if you want to perform and if you want to, you know, do music videos and be on the other side of the entertainment industry, this is a possibility for you. Cause I see it. And she was a professional dancer. She was in, um, 
She danced for Missy Elliott. She was in Party in the USA music video, Miley Cyrus. Like, she she knew what she was talking about. At the time, I was like, woman, what are you talking? I'm literally just in here trying to move my body, and you're telling me to go be a professional dancer? Like, what are you on? But I stuck, like, stuck with her, and... I never stopped dancing because it just felt, it just feels amazing. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things to do in life besides sleeping and eating. Um, <laughs> that's it. Dance, sleep, eat. I could do that all day, every day. But anyway, um, so I kind of started getting into that side of it. And when everything, 20, so fast forward to 20, I'm still working at IMAX. As, so I would go to IMAX and get off work, go take dance classes until 9 o'clock in the evening, and then go home, and then get ready for bed. And then fast forward to 2020, everybody's thinking about, you know, everybody had to slow down. Riots are breaking out. Protests are breaking out. Everybody's thinking about how can I, what is, like, how can I make a positive impact? How can I be a change? How can I be a part of this movement and this change? And I thought about how much movement positively impacted my life. Um, not just, you know, because everything is about movement, but that's a different topic too. Sorry. <laughs> but um, I kind of, I found this new program at here at Ohio University, Masters in Community Dance, and I was like, this sounds dope, because it was all about um, getting people moving. People, not necessarily people who are trying to be dancers, but as humans, we all have the ability to learn rhythm and pick up rhythm, and dance is an outlet for that, and it's something that, you know, back, way back, earlier civilizations and like our ancestors dance was a part of life like i don't i don't know how many of y'all know that but we even in all cultures around the world like dance is a part of daily life you use dance to tell stories to tell history to do a bunch of things i don't even know that uh, i'm going off on so many tangents but like i said it's all relevant to how i got here so i it's applied. all the journey it's a journey. It's really a journey. So I started that, pro I applied for that program. I got accepted. They, they, I had, like I said, no real dance background experience for real, aside from what I had started doing um, a couple years prior to that. And then I came here, OU, I was literally on this campus last year <laughs> doing that program. Um, and I, I graduated, I did research for it, obviously, because it's a graduate program, but I really wanted to look at how dance can benefit people who are not dancers, or how dance benefits just the human body, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and there are a ton of benefits that, that come with that, and so I did that program, it's kind of sidetracked, but Fast forward to this day, I graduated, I needed a job. I was like, okay, I need to like start making money. And I um, started working at Hype Space because I was able to use my past experience to pick, that, pick up that job, honestly. Like I didn't skip a beat. So if you ever wanna like go explore other passions that you have also, like do it. Cause don't ever think that you're gonna be like off track or you're gonna like throw yourself for a loop or nobody, or you're gonna be um, like not desired in the marketplace. Every experience that you have is gonna add to like what Stephanie was saying, the the being a well-rounded human being, being a well-rounded well well person um, who has passions, who has interests, who has things, other experiences that you can bring into your role. Um, and that's kind of how I got here and now, I'm working on some new projects and soon to come a born movement look out for it um because right. i like i've always known that i'm i have an entrepreneurial spirit and i've always known i want to start my own business but i just didn't exactly know what it was and now a born movement is going to be about going into these going into corporations like the ones that i work at and used to work at um and and getting people moving, like getting people moving around. We need it now more than 
ever, literally, because it just, if you can move, if people can move, too many of us are not moving um, in, in a societal aspect, in an individual aspect. It's, it's a whole thing. Um, but bottom line, if anybody's watching this um, business-wise, it can, you know, the two main things are movement within a corporation or organization. It can um, decrease health care costs for your company long term. You've got people being active, people being, you know, moving around. And it increases team engagement, um, all the things, productivity, creativity, out having an outlet to express yourself. People can engage and learn about each other through movement. And yeah, so that's this is where I am today. But Hype Space. <laughs> Hype Space has been a journey. It's a new, it's a brand new company. It's a startup. Um, it's a platform where people can create challenges, enter challenges. Think like ice bucket challenge. That's more so of the vein um, that we're in. We are want to be the place where brands, individuals, and charities and nonprofits want to host challenges on to engage with their consumers and build community in that way. So right. I still have a lot going on, obviously. I just <laughs> talked for like 25 minutes, but thank you <laughs> so much for listening. It's a journey right there. It's the journey. It is really, it has been a journey, and I'm grateful for it all. <laughs> so, Stephanie, what about your journey? Well, I'm going to let her take a breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. So right, yes. Yeah. Um, while she's taking a breath, um, <laughs> remind me the question. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Tell us about engaged. your journey to the job you have now and what which stops along the way helped you get there. Um, yeah, I would say uh, three main things, and maybe that's something I learned from Professor Davis is three. three. Oh, the magic of threes, <laughs> yeah. It's a marketing tool. Um, first thing, putting in the work, and really that's uh, everything I did here at OU was the work in class, the work in my extracurriculars, and really putting in that work because letting your work speak for itself, I think is really helpful and letting your work ethic speak for itself is great. Um, two, being your own advocate, right? As we all know, we have to do that when we're getting our first job. So really putting yourself out there when you are job searching after school. Um, you know a little bit about my journey, but it took me a few months after school to get my first job and there's nothing wrong with that. I got to have some patience. But um, I applied all over. I actually did not ever want to move to New York City. I wanted to be in Chicago or Denver or Austin. And so I m was focused on those jobs and I decided to put myself out there to some jobs in New York. And it, that's how I got my start in New York is just by putting myself out there. But I think the third thing is really finding the people who are going to advocate for you and who see the what's what's valuable about what you bring to the table and believe in you, I think is what's been most helpful for me and getting my first job, my promotions, my next job, and even where I am today is just like really having those people in your corner, really like my board of executives, I like to think of them in my head of my mentors, who I can go to and lean on because they're gonna speak on your behalf. Yeah. That's the people who are gonna want success for you um, Professor Davis being one of them, other Bobcats that I connected with and other alumni who helped me find new spaces to um, excel in New York. Um, and then when you start your jobs is finding those managers or those people that, again, mentor you, but are also going to help to give you um, those opportunities, I think has been uh, really important for me. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, good point. Okay. We're on the sixth question. We got seven here. So, how are we on time? Ten minutes. Okay. So, what is the best part of the job you have now? There are so many. Um, <laughs> but what I enjoy most about the job that I have now is truly the opportunity to serve. Um, and I, I really look at service in terms of I've in the time that I've been in my career, really taking the time to learn what my strengths are um, and looking at those as gifts to help amplify others and, and give them to others to also reach their full potential. And as a program manager and what I get to create or promote or um, 
as well as scale, really seeing the meaning in some of those projects, mm -hmm. um, whether it's related to recruiting. And so even before someone like folks like you all get to interact with with a company, how do we ensure that you can see yourself here uh, here at, at the company right now? So at Amazon, can you see yourself here? Can you see yourself being included in um, thriving and working in an environment where you're having fun and you're learning and you're getting opportunities. Um, and that's something I'm very passionate about, have always been. I think advice has been coming through all the answers that we've um, shared, but um, having a human resources background as well, it always comes through. I enjoy helping people with their resumes, um, prepping for interviews when they're in the workspace. Stephanie spoke a lot about um, mentorship, but I think what I wish I would have learned more when I was in, uh, when I was a university age was um, finding sponsors too. Sometimes they genuinely come along and they're people who can speak up for you in rooms where you're, you're not gonna be and your work does have to speak for you in that moment, but they are very strategic folks who can say, I know this person and I know the work that they're going to do. And whether it's your performance review or um, up for more compensation right. or really just someone who can vouch for you and, and, and finding those people and understanding what the difference may be for how they need to speak up for you. And I think oftentimes it, it's not that someone doesn't want to um, be successful or they're not engaged. Sometimes they just don't know. And so right. um, I very much appreciate the journey that I've been on. I've had some baptisms of fire, um, which I think a lot of us get sometimes, as well as some really wonderful mentors and sponsors that have taken the time to help me learn. Um, and I really enjoy taking those resources and whether it's putting it into my formal work or when I work with people voluntarily to make sure that they have the information too, um, to just be aware of what opportunities are present and when they come and they will come, um, that they're ready to take them on. So that's Great. what I love most about my job now. Great, thank you, thank you. Ashley, what's the best part of your job that you have now? <laughs> right. <laughs> the best part, I mean, it's just really exciting to to create something for me. It's it's taking, you know, it's a that is that in and of itself is a journey um because like when I started working at Hype Space, we had no members on the app and today we have almost 3,000 and I have in that process, I've had to do a lot of, I, I do mostly like marketing um, right now because we're in very much, we've been building the product. I've been able to literally build the product, not me, I, I don't code, but I've been able to tell, you know, give the, the coders direction about what features we should have in this product what is you know what's hot in the marketplace right now what is going to be a good user experience for the people who are coming to our product thinking about you know thinking about strategy thinking about when when right now we've been doing an um an influencer campaign where we're trying to we're doing a lot of research to um reach find influencers reach out to them ask them to basically taking them through a funnel asking them to create a challenge asking them to promote the challenge in our app on their social media platforms seeing how that performs a lot of them flop i'm not gonna lie like it, it's all like it's such a trial and error thing but that is really exciting to me um and to just see you know, when you find something that works, it feels really, really good and that you can, you know, figure out what that process is and learn how to repeat it. Um, and then I just love talking to, I do, like I said, I, I do a lot of meetings, which is kind of like sales, but I love talking to people um, about the, the, the product and the company and the opportunities that can come with it, um, which is just really fun. It, it makes it's very like engaging for me. Um, and I like that we are remote. <laughs> oh, I like that I get to, you know, I get to be here right now and go pop on my computer a little bit later to, to do some work, which is really nice. Um, and I like, yeah, I would say those are like the main things that I love, like being able to create something be an advocate for the company and, and what we're creating and also 
um, showing people how what we are creating can benefit them as well and then actually getting to see that in real time. A uh, side note, I forgot to say the most important part about Hype Space is not only do you participate in challenges, but you can win prizes. And we've been doing a lot of um, like cash prizes. And there are people who have won literally like thousands of dollars from just being early on in this app um, that they haven't heard about it yet. A lot of people haven't heard about it, obviously, but the ones who are on there, they are winning money, y'all. Like, I mean, thousands of dollars and we get messages from them all the time saying like, oh, this just helped me pay a bill. Like this just helped me so much. I'm so grateful and all, you know, the feel good things, the, the, when you get to, receive the feedback that what you're doing is making a positive difference in somebody's life. I, I enjoy that a lot. Um, and like I said, just being able to talk to people about something new and seeing where it goes. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Stephanie, the best part of your job now. I have two parts of my job that give me a lot of personal gratification. I would say the first one being um, collaboration. I think similarly, I love connecting with other people. I love learning what their discipline is. So the way that my job works is I'm the day-to-day -day client lead and I'm responsible for working with a few different disciplines who are more so experts in their field. I'm more so, um, I have a little bit of knowledge of what they all do, right? Um, so I love connecting with all of them and seeing what they do. I also get to work with the uh, media partners um, and that whole industry and get to learn um, and, and get to talk to new people on that side of things. So I think just connecting the dots and really being able to leverage a lot of my communication skills. Um, I do a lot of problem solving at my job, oh, yeah. <laughs> which I love. It's very, um, gives me a lot of satisfaction when things go well. I can help answer questions really quickly. Um, that's really, really important to me. I'm very efficient work style. So that to me, I love problem solving and, and helping my clients out in a pinch. And then from like a pride in my work point of view, I love doing a lot of cool stuff that gets headlines, that wins awards. That's always really fun and gratifying it in some way and stuff you can put on your resume and your portfolio. But I think on the other side of things, it's driving business results for clients. I think at the end of the day is what we're there for. So if I can help prove out that the work that we're doing at the end of the day is helping them get new customers, drive sales, grow market share, um, I think is always really beneficial to, again, my career and just right. makes me feel good about the work I'm doing. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, last question. It's an easy one. What advice do you have for students today? I will try to keep it short. I'll try to keep it <laughs> short. Um, oh, we got three minutes? Oh, you got Yeah, I will. Short. I will. Uh, the first I will say is um, really be clear on where you're seeking validation from and um, like intrinsically what's going to motivate you. I think coming out of school, oftentimes it's, I got an A, so that showed me that I knew what I was doing and that I'm successful. But once you graduate and you're on your own, it's it's going to be the validation from the work project that you may have had, but I also encourage people to get your validation from outside of work um, and, and build that confidence for yourself too, because you're more than just what you do. It's a big component, it takes a lot of time, but you're more than, than what you do. So find what's gonna keep you motivated outside of work, different things that you love. So when those hard times come, and it may be a difficulty at work, you have other things to lean on that you've built your self-esteem um, upon. So I'll leave it that's at great. that, I think that's okay. my, my go-to. Ashley, one minute. What advice do you have for t today's students? Find mentors and build relationships with them. And a mentor doesn't necessarily have to mean someone who is, you know, like super high, high up there, but it can, it can literally be the person who is one, uh, title above you or something like that. Uh, definitely mentorship is really, really important. And those relationships are going to help you a lot in the long run because they, while you're going, you will fail. That's a good thing. Failure is not a bad thing, but they can um, help give you feedback on how to like 
perhaps not fail as hard again. Oh, <laughs> um, and, and they'll believe in you, you know, find people who genuinely see you, but that goes with putting yourself out there. You have to put yourself out there in order to really find mentors that are going to connect with you because a lot of people do once they you know, as they're going on their own journey, they have acquired a lot of knowledge and they're more than willing to, they want to um, like help the people that are coming after them. So definitely don't sleep on that. Don't sleep on finding mentors and people who, you know, you see where they're going, you see what they've done. Um, don't be afraid to reach out, utilize LinkedIn. I'm sure y'all have heard this a million times, but I'm just going to iterate once again, mentorship great yeah stephanie what advice do you have for today's students i would say definitely be open-minded mm -hmm. i was not someone who knew what i wanted to do and felt very strongly about that and i worked to achieve that i kind of you know um paved my own path as they say and you have to be open-minded because especially in this world everything's changing every day you have to be open to taking new opportunities or finding a new path depending on what suits you at that time so definitely be open-minded and have some patience because <laughs> it's not always easy it's not going to come right away your dream job is not usually the first one you take out of college there's a lot of things you have to learn along the way so have some patience you'll get there and it'll be great <laughs> that's great thank you so Okay.